Hey everybody, so I shot some footage earlier today about um, some pest problem that I'm having in my garden. So I will have to say that living at this property has definitely been educational because about every pest problem that you can have, <laughs> I have experienced. And I'm talking about even to beavers. Yeah, I've had beaver problems. So, um, I'm learning a lot about pests in the garden. So I took some footage earlier of uh, my cat mint. I called it cat nip in the video a couple of times, but it is cat mint. And um, since I moved in, it, it started with just tiny little spots on it. I never could really see any kind of bug on it. And then it uh, finally got um, sort of worse this year being the worst then it moved on to some salvias I have in another place so I finally thought well, I've, I've just got to get rid of this now what I'd like to do if you saw my other video about the aphids I prefer to to try to keep it as natural as possible and keep the ecosystem just in check um, I'd like to have the bugs that are going to eat the bad bugs I like to have lizards and skinks and birds and all of that that just works it all out and kind of keeps a check and balance and sometimes it works and sometimes it doesn't well this had just gotten to the point where I'm, I was thinking it's just it's a total infestation I'm gonna have to do something about it so I took some video which I will show you um, parts of it to show you what the what the um, infected plant looked like and I, in the video, I say that it looks like a little white fly, and I guess I really would say it's more of a, um, a clear-looking fly with a, maybe a tiny gray. And sorry, there's a boat going by. I kind of paused that for the boat going by. But anyway, it's not a really a white fly. I just I kind of said that suspecting it was a white fly because it was sort of. It, it was flying and that's the only thing I knew of that would fly like that but it I was almost more like of a almost an iridescent color um, sort of gray brown but clear at the same time so um, I came inside and I looked up what I could about pest and it appears that um, white flies kind of leave a lot of white residue underneath there and I wasn't seeing any of that so I don't think it was a white fly. I think it was probably a lace bug. Um, it looked a lot like the pictures and the damage was spot on for a lace bug. So we can add that to the list of pests that I have now gained knowledge about, <laughs> unfortunately. So um, hopefully this will take care of the problem. Um, if not, then I'm digging them up and we're gonna do something else for sure but uh, I hope that all of my mishaps and my problems in my garden will help you be able to figure out some things when you have these troubles in your garden too you guys have a great rest of your day good morning everybody just gonna take you along on my little job this morning so this is my cat mint it blooms every year. I shear it back two or three times a year once it's done blooming. It, um, it's living, but it's constantly had a problem. Let me show you a close-up. So, it's got some kind of insect damage on it. I thought it maybe it was a fungal thing, came from overhead watering, but I finally decided it's some kind of insect, it's some kind of sucking insect. So if anybody out there knows what it is, please let me know. There. So what I was going to do is cut it all back, which I usually have to share it about three times a year anyway, but this is ready to bloom again so I'm cutting off the blooms if I do that but um, I'm gonna do it anyway 
So then I trimmed it all back, and this is what the trim back looks like. Ugh. Awful. So now I'm thinking, I don't know, maybe I just want to start over and put something else in this corner. What do y'all think? Thinking about the agapanthus over there. I see a little hummer at it right now. I don't know if you can see that or not. Thinking about just extending it. Doesn't need as much maintenance as the catnip. Let me know your thoughts. Okay, the more I kept cutting, the more I saw little white winged bugs flying out. So definitely got a problem of taking all this and then throw it away. You want to bag it up when it's insect or fungus disease. Bag it. Don't put it in the compost. And preferably just don't put it in the county compost either. If you bag it, they'll take it to the landfill instead. And hopefully that'll keep things from spreading around. So there we go. That's the second side all cleaned up. Definitely much more flying insects, so uh, got a problem. I also cleaned up all the mulch best I could that was on top. Try to remove as much of that so that they won't be still living down there. So, okay, this is the one I'm going to use with it. Um, it says white flies is something it gets, so I'm thinking it would work. I'm going to spray directly on the plants with it. But I might come back and I'm going to check into horticultural oil um, and see about treating the soil with that. I don't know if you can or not, but um, I'm thinking I might try to treat the soil all around it with the, something I have a bigger amount of or I can mix up and spray. I'll keep you updated. I found more of it I forgot about over here. So now I've got to take care of it. So I miss you. One more quick thing I wanted to add was that whenever you spray with something that will kill all insects, um, I always cut off the blooms and try to spray like late in the evening so that um, the bees don't come around and the bees don't get harmed by that. So just remember that too, especially the if you, if you cut the blooms off, they're probably not going to have any bees come over, but um, if you don't, then you could definitely harm the bees, and we don't want to do that. So just remember to cut the blooms off or spray late in the evening after the bees have stopped their activity for the day.